Welcome to episode 13 of Real Life, Real Gospel, sponsored by St. Paul Lutheran Church and School in Boca Raton, Florida. I am your host, Josh Laborious, and this week we are discussing giving. This topic is courtesy of the Red Letter Challenge, which we are still walking through even in the midst of of everything that's going on and it means all of those challenges have taken a little bit of a different understanding a little bit of a different light a different application but it's it's still good to get into Jesus words and see how they apply to our lives so as we walk through that this is the week of giving now normally in case this is your first time listening to the show normally we would get our topic from one of you the listeners either commented on YouTube or Spotify or whatever medium you're listening to this on or emailed to me directly. And I take up that topic and my goal is to take topics in real life that people struggle with every day and to look at what the reality of being a Christian in that situation, in that reality is. So... I, I try to avoid theological and academic language because I want this to be a very practical podcast. Um, so, that's nor- normally how we get topics. We have one more week of the Red Letter Challenge and then I will be back to that. So, if you have topics, please submit them, get them in so that so that I have those and we can go forward discussing those. But this week we are talking about giving. Um, it is always tough to talk about giving. So, that statistic... Of, of the population that actually gives money to charity is down to like 53% according to Market Watch. That's less than, ha- or that, that's just over half of the population that actually gives to charity. So, as far as things that are difficult for us to hear, things that are convicting, a lot of people who hear this, a lot of people who I can assume I'm talking to, don't give to charity. And it's, it's difficult because we think our money is ours and we have that understanding of it's not really a gift from God. We earned it. So we, don't, we, we want to keep what's ours. We want to use what's ours for the things that we want to do. And it's, it's really difficult to ask because there's always this suspicion in the back of our mind. Is, is someone telling me to give just because they want my money? Are they telling me to give out of selfishness themselves? So, I I know that's like a sneaking suspicion. And I know growing up, if I heard someone preach about giving more to the church, there there was always that suspicion. Are you just saying this because you want more? Or, Or is this genuinely a call to generosity? So, what I, I want to start is I want to address and speak that suspicion, even whether it's conscious or not, I want to speak that out loud so that I can address it. In that uh, my goal in this podcast is not to get more for myself. It's not not to somehow encourage more giving, even to St. Paul, uh, the church that is sponsoring this podcast. But it, it is to speak to... What is generosity? What is the biblical instruction and example and reasons for giving? So that is is why I'm going forward, and that is the motivation here. And I have done my best to remove all sort of selfish motivations from this. I obviously may have some of those that I can't do anything about, but I, I have done my best to prepare this in such a way that it is it is the scripture speaking and not necessarily me speaking. And that's what I want to start with. And that's what I want to clear this out. And you may ask, well, again, why does this matter? Why is it worth talking about? Why is it worth listening to? The first reason is that it's called for again and again and again by scripture. Scripture talks about money a lot. It talks about giving and generosity a lot. So we're going to talk about it. Uh, another reason that it is worth talking about, that it matters, is because this is this is my effort to try and help contribute to some sense of normalcy. 
to keep the podcast going, to keep it in line with the Red Letter Challenge, and to keep it coming out on Thursdays. So um, that's a little bit of a, a different kind of reason. And then um, another reason that I think it matters is because in times like this, when we're struggling, when we're struggling as a society, I think there are two reactions frequently. Um there are reactions that are, let's circle the wagons, let's take care of ourselves, um, and kind of that tightens our grip on, on money and on other things in our life. And then there's the other reaction of, look at how many people are in need. I'm not going to worry about myself. Let me help them. So I think even, especially in a time like this, we're going to talk about generosity and giving because now can be the hardest time, but it can also be some of the most impactful time for us to be a, a people of generosity. So to start with that, uh, this this is Real Giving, Real Gospel, hosted again by me, Josh Laborious. And as we begin this discussion about what is the biblical take on giving and what is the what is the faith? What is our faith? What does our God have to say about this? I want to start in Exodus and I want to start in Exodus 35 verse 29 says, all the men and women, the people of Israel, whose heart moved them to bring anything for the work of the Lord, uh, the work that the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. So to explain, because I, I took a verse out here, and generally I don't like doing that because it's really, e- if you're just reading one verse, it's really easy to have it out of context. But for me to actually capture the context, I would have had to read like 20 verses to you, and I didn't want to take that much time. So I thought I'd summarize the context that precedes this and then read this kind of key verse in my view. Um, beforehand, the Lord is talking to Moses and the Lord is outlining everything that is neat, that needs to happen for the temple to be built, for the tabernacle to be built, for the priests to, to have their ceremonial clothes and all of the things associated with that. He talks about labor. He talks about materials. He talks about all of kind of the logistics of that. And then it goes from the Lord telling Moses to Moses telling the people, Here's what we need to do. Here's what God has commanded us to do. And then the pe- and then right before this verse you see the people in every instance stepping up and and giving f- of free will. There was there was no mandate everybody has to give this much. People just came and gave what they could for the glory of God, for the tabernacle, for the priests. These are people of every level of society and this is all out of generosity not obligation. And that's kind of what I want to key in here is that a lot of people will point to the Old Testament as here's where some of the commands to give are, the commands to tithe, the guidelines for that. But what I want to key in here is there's this idea in the Old Testament of of generosity, not obligation. And one of the first points to draw from that is that God's word leads to generosity. This is a, generosity is a virtue. It's, it's like patience or kindness. Um, so why, why are we patient? Well, because we should be. Is there any other reason? Not really. Why are we kind? Why are we good? Why are we, name the fruit of the spirit you want to talk about. We do the, we, we, we do our best to be virtuous just for, the sake of the virtue, because it's something that God has told us is good. And I think it's kind of weird that we treat generosity any differently because it is a virtue. We really ought to be generous for our own sake. We shouldn't be generous because in the long run, it's going to help us out or uh, because it makes it f- us feel good, or even though that might be the case, or we shouldn't be generous just because we believe in the cause behind something. There, there doesn't have to be a practical reason behind our generosity. It's generosity in itself is a virtue. Do it for its own sake. Be generous just to be generous is, is kind of this, this 
thing that I want to pull out from this passage is these people were being generous just because God said, be generous. It's good to be generous. And kind of a follow-up from that, and I, I know this kind of maybe even undercuts what I just said, but I think there is also this practicality to it in that if you're doing it for the community, you're building up the community that you live in, that you work in, that you have family in, that you have friends in. So there, I want to get at this duality that is, I think, captured by this passage in Exodus, that we should be generous just for generosity's sake, just because God says it's good. But at the same time, there is a practical benefit to generosity in that it builds up the community that we're a part of. So when we do things for the community, what I'm speaking of to generosity is building up the church, building up uh, to, and the, the things that we build up the church for. You may say, why do we give to the church? Well, as far as I see it, the church's responsibility is two things. To build up the glory of God and to build up the neighbor, to love God and serve others. That is what the church and Christians all over are called to do. So when we give to the church, and if the church is properly fulfilling its mission, we are giving to the church so it can then support our neighbors, support the people around us, and to for the glory of God. So that's kind of where where our support comes in. We're equipping the church to do these things, to do this work in our world. Um, so that's kind of this, this idea of we're giving for the community. And for example, the passage we just read out of Exodus, that was, uh, a, again, a perfect example of this. They gave to the church so that they, as a community, would have a place to come together and worship. So there, there was this, we are supporting our neighbor in our giving, but then there was also this, they're building this incredible structure for the glory of God to show people how great and awesome he is. So I think even our motives for giving for the church, giving for our body of faith are, are demonstrated even here as early as Exodus and as we go forward, what, what I think this demonstrates of the Israelites at the time is that their number one priority was God. It doesn't say, well, they weighed and made sure it fit into their budgets. It didn't, doesn't say, you know, that they, they made sure that they had X, Y, and Z. First, it says they gave. They gave as was needed for the tabernacle and for, for the other things associated with that. So, what I, what I want to draw from that is something that I think is, is, well, I know because I wrote the outline for this show. It's going to drive us into our gospel reading, this idea of how we give and how we, we are generous with, yes, our money, but also our time and our abilities. It shows where our priorities are. And I know, yes, there's, there's a reality to, you know... If you have rent or a mortgage, that's going to be a huge percentage of your paycheck. So I, I don't necessarily want to think about, like, what do you spend the most money on? But I, I, want to, I want you to stop and think, what is it a priority for you to have money for? And what I would ask you to do at this point is think about the things in your life that you put a priority on and that you spend on. Whether that is time or money. How much time do you spend on different things? How much money do you spend on different things? Because what that communicates is there's a priority for that. If you spend hundreds of dollars a year making sure you can watch certain sports teams, whether that be season tickets or whether that be a, a TV streaming package, you are, that's a priority for you. And the flip side, the reflection part, the law part of this is how much of a priority do you have on your faith, on the church that you go to? Is it a priority? So, and how, how much of that priority is reflected in our giving? 
So that is going to lead us into Matthew. But before I, before we move into Matthew, I want to conclude Exodus with this this break, this summary, I guess, that the reality is we don't. A lot of us don't give, and money is the be all end all. Money is the thing to cling to. Money it becomes an idol. It money is the important thing. And using the money exactly how we want to use it is the important thing. It's selfish. We think it's ours. And that is the law here. But the gospel is that God forgives us and he does work through what we do give. God doesn't need us to do his work. But the other gospel here is that God works generosity in the people around us and in us as a virtue. And that's kind of where I want to leave Exodus, and we're going to shift to Matthew 6, starting at verse 19, where it says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy... Your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Then the light in if then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for he will either hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So textual notes and, and kind of what I want to focus in is that first section. And then the last, the last sentence. So first, it, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy. So what this is getting at, this is kind of poetic language, moth and rust, is that pretty much covers everything. There is nothing that, that natural forces or time won't eventually degrade, decompose, um, Except for apparently styrofoam, which may be a joke in poor taste, but take it with what you will. So that's kind of what it's getting at first is we're putting our stock and our treasure in things that are ultimately going to disappear. And then this last bit about serving two masters, there's this reality that if you are trying to serve two masters, they're going to eventually have different goals. Eventually, you're going to have to choose one one is going to have to take precedence over the other because they're not going to agree on everything. So my, my question is, how do we show that we treasure God above other things? And this is the reality of we sacrifice to him and we, we give up other things for him, whether, yes, that is money or time or, or things that we're involved with. Show that he is the master. Um, one example of this is say one master quote unquote is your job is getting money or is having that success or, or that uplifting feeling from your boss of doing well. And the other master is God. Well, if your boss asks you to come in Sunday morning, what do you treasure more? That feeling from being able to say yes to your boss, maybe earning a little bit of extra money, or obeying God and spending time worshiping him. Like how we spend our time in treasure is a reflection of how much we treasure God. And I know a lot of you will will respond to me and you'll think to yourself, well, theoretically, you can have both. Um... And an example for this would be you know say one uh, say a guy is is a is eats a normal diet including meat but he he wants to be in a relationship with this girl who is vegetarian and he he might say well i can do both i can serve this quote unquote master of my regular diet and serve this master of my this girl and theoretically, yes, you can. he can just cut meat out of his diet when he's with her, but th- there's a conflict there. He's having to pick one or the other. So he's either going to have to sacrifice his relationship with this girl for his diet, 
or he's going to have to sacrifice part of his diet for the girl. And I know that's kind of a silly example and it is a little bit of a stretch, but I think that's how we, we show that we treasure God, that he is our priority. We give up those things that help us to be in a better relationship with him. Make God the priority. And it's at this point where I am going to draw us back into finances because honestly, that is going to be a little bit of a focus. It has been so far. It will be as we continue because I think that is the the primary way that we give, especially in a time where we can't really give as far as time because we're all supposed to stay at home. And so when it's talking about finances, there's this, we ought to make it the priority to give to God to be generous with our offerings. So my suggestion to you is take it out first. I'm going to say it. When you get your paycheck, whatever that looks like, the first thing to spend that money on, to put any of that money toward, is God. The first thing you should do when you get paid is, is give. Give whatever percentage you're giving. Um, That demonstrates priority. You're saying God is the most important thing I could give this money to. The community of faith I'm a part of is the most important thing I could give this money to. And what else this demonstrates, it demonstrates priority, but it also demonstrates trust because what you're saying is, God, I'm giving this to you because I trust that you are going to take care of me. And I trust that if I give this money to God, I will be okay. And there, there is also this practical aspect of if it is the first thing to go and that money just goes once you pay your paycheck, you don't really miss it as much because it's, it's kind of like you didn't really have it in the first place. So there's that practicality to that. Um, and that's all what we're pulling out of Matthew, this idea that we're, we're not to lay up treasures for ourselves on earth. That's not where our priority is. And we can't serve two masters. We can't serve this, this desire to have money, to, to get more money, to, to use money exactly how we want and serve God. One has to take priority. So this reality is we, we have this desire to keep what is quote unquote ours, even though it is a gift from God. And we, we frequently do serve money. We do everything we can to get more of it. We work extra hours. We work extra hard. Frequently, I I played tennis with this gentleman once and he told me he was studying computers. And I was like, oh, I I loved studying computers. I I minored minored in it in undergrad. And I asked him, so what got you interested in computers? And he said, because I can make really good money. You see... We, f- we make decisions and we make choices and we make moves frequently based on money, despite our calling to serve God, not money. And in a lot of ways, finances have become our master. But the, the real gospel here is that Christ gave up everything for us. He didn't store up treasures in this earthly life. He gave up everything for us. And there is this reality that he celebrates anything and everything we give. And for that, I, I want to just quick, I want to remind you of the story of the widow at the temple. There are all these rich people giving giving hefty sums of money, but for them, you know, it, it was still nothing. And then the, this widow comes up in the temple and Jesus and his disciples are watching and she gives one coin. And he says, she just gave more than all of those rich people did because she gave what she could. She gave everything. So that's kind of where I want to leave us is that you may be feeling like, oh, it's really tough for me to give. I I have debt or I have expense. I have all these things that I have to take care of. I have a family to provide for. And the gospel I have for you today is that Christ celebrates everything and anything that we can give, that we do give. So while, yes, we are called to give and we're called to be generous with our giving and we're called to make that a priority, there's this reality that Christ is going to celebrate with whatever we do in that way. 
And that kind of concludes our discussion on Matthew. And I, I now want to move to 1 John 3, starting at verse 16. Not John 3, 16, 1 John 3, 16, where it says, By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. But if anyone has the world's good and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. So what this passage speaks to is is living our faith. If we see the church struggling, if we see our neighbor struggling, we are called to step into that. To show them love. To build them up. And I think this is when this podcast becomes incredibly relevant to the time that we're in right now as people are losing their jobs and people are struggling and people can't work like they would and we have this temptation to draw into ourselves to say no I need to I need to buy all that toilet paper in case I need it I need to hoard this stuff I need to hold on tight to all of my money because I might need it and what this passage says is no If God's love abides in us and we have goods, we have money, and we see our brother in need, we should be giving to them. And yeah, that might be sacrificial, but we're called to follow Christ's example. And that's why this passage starts with talking about how Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. So even if we have to suffer a little bit to support our neighbors in need, We're called to do that anyway. We're called to love in deed and truth. We may say we love our neighbor, and we may strive to speak that way and to feel that way, but this is a call to live it out. Because the reality is talking is easy, but giving is hard. And I think it's that's really true right now, but we're called to live generously. To live in that way. So what I want to conclude this section is on the gospel. That God will take care of us. That God did lay down his life for us. That God's priority is us. And that he has a love for us that abides and that is lived out. So uh, this podcast might have made you feel uncomfortable. It made me feel a little uncomfortable talking about it at certain points. But the conclusion, the summary of this is that there is an inescapable call and command through Scripture for us to be generous, for us to give, even give sacrificially, to make giving to the church, giving to our neighbor a priority for the glory of God and for love of neighbor. So there's this very hard law there there's this call to do that but in almost every place we see that we also see this incredible gospel of God appreciating our efforts even when we fail to give even when we don't give as much as we could or we should Christ works through that and he loves us regardless we don't have to pay for our forgiveness we don't have to pay for Christ's love That is a given. That is a gift to you and I. We don't have to earn it. So if you walk away from this podcast with anything today, what I want you to walk away with is to look for ways in your life to be generous and to show love in deed and in truth. And the second thing I want you to walk away with is that God will work through whatever you can give him and that he loves you no matter what, You are forgiven no matter what, and you are a part of the body of Christ no matter what. So that's where we're going to leave this episode, Real Giving, Real Gospel. This has been episode 13 of Real Life, Real Gospel, sponsored by St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. We are available on YouTube, which you can find really easily if you just search St. Paul Lutheran Church and School in Boca Raton, Florida. It's 
one of the first samples that comes up. The podcast is on there. It's also on Spotify, on Podbean, on Google Podcasts, and on iTunes. So however you want to listen to it, we are available for you. We release on Thursdays. Feel free to subscribe. If you have topic suggestions, please send them my way. Brothers and sisters, with that, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.